We love it. Raw! Watch the podcast YouTube page. We love it raw. Last night, Raw emanated from across the pond the O2 Arena. And as we all know, when Raw goes across the pond, it's raucous, it's wild, and it's crazy. And we're just two weeks away from Extreme Rules, the first pay-per-view after WrestleMania. And tonight, we learn more about the matches and stipulations leading up to Extreme Rules in two weeks. And I start with Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. Stipulations were to be placed by either one, if either Rollins won or Randy Orton won. So, are you wondering what happened with that main event? Well, I'm going to get into it in a little bit. As I start with Randy Orton winning his match allowing him to put a stipulation in place for his title match against Seth Rollins. So you're wondering, what did Seth Rollins do? Did he lose or did he win? Well, he won. In what was by far a vivid flashback of WCW. And what I'm talking about was, if you all remember the Monday Night Wars, with the NWO, Nash and Hogan supposedly had that beef, and then uh, Hall, Hall, um, now Nash laid down, and uh, you know Hogan pinned him to win the, the WCW title in a coup. So Kane thought heavily, like, should I do it? Should I not do it? At first, it looked like he was going to do it. Then. It was like, oh, wait a minute, he's not going to do it, he's going to leave the authority, but then he softened up, laid down, gave Seth Rollins the win, allowing him to put a stipulation in his title match. So you're probably wondering, now with both of these individuals winning their respective matches, what's the stipulation going to be? We learned that Seth Rollins has banned the RKO, Orton's big guns. So Orton countered and said, okay, you want to ban the RKO, I'm going to put you in a steel cage. And you have nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. And I'm going to tell you right now, Extreme Rules is shaping up to be pretty interesting. Especially the WWE Championship match. No RKO. Inside a steel cage. You know right then and there. All hell will break loose. Next I want to talk about the Diva situation. And what's been going on with that. You always heard about hashtag give Divas a chance. Well they got their chance. Last night there was a Divas Battle Royal. And it was down to Naomi. And Paige, the hometown favorite. Paige won the match. She was ecstatic. But we saw a true side of Naomi that I thought we'd never see. She ended up attacking Paige. And she was proud of herself. So I look for down the road a Paige Naomi rivalry. And I think it's going to be for the Divas title because I see Paige winning the Divas title in two weeks. And lastly, I want to talk about next week's big announcement. Triple H will be on Raw next week. And he's going to make a big announcement. If you remember back in the early 2000s, WWE's original Tough enough. It was a competition to see which male or and female would be WWE superstar and divas. Well, after a long hiatus, Triple H is going to make the big announcement that it is coming back. Will it be good as the original? 
I have no idea. I want to see who's hosting it, number one. It's going to be really interesting. And so let's see how this turns out. I think it's going to be a bust, but I could be wrong. So next week, Triple H makes the big announcement that Tough Enough is making a big return. And hopefully we find out who the host is. We love it. Raw! It's Mr. Caldero. I'm just here to make you feel better. Hey, we love it raw. We love it. What's up, everybody? This is Mr. Caldero, and that was Triple C's Chris Corey's Corner. Now, I want to close the show with a few of my thoughts. Number one, raw was trash. I guess Chris Corey put a little sprinkle on it. It was pretty much very boring. I didn't... I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. I didn't feel it. I wasn't feeling it. The Divas match was awesome. But that was the highlight of the night. Bray Wyatt's promo was good but confusing. Is he talking to Undertaker? And the whole Randy Orton, Seth Rollins thing, I'm completely bored with. But to give them credit, every single match that they're going to have in a pay-per-view is going to be awesome. This week-to-week -week shit is getting old. Anyways. What Chris Corey was talking about in the Tough Enough thing. There's a few things that I know that he did not mention. This year's Tough Enough is going to be filmed and then put out very close to when it's filmed. So it's going to be very into fan interaction. So that's awesome. And next week, as my co-host said, Triple H, the game, is finally back. And he's been gone since WrestleMania. And holy but Jesus, Raw is not the same without the authority. We are pro-authority on this side. Fuck yourself, nigga, kill yourself, nigga, suicide, nigga. Well, anyways, nothing really else going on. I watched season two of Tough Enough on the WWE Network. Surprisingly to see that Kenny King from TNA was top four. And it's so awesome to go back and watch Tough Enough and be like, wow, look, John Morrison. Wow. Look at Kenny King from TNA. Now he's in he's in a stable with fucking MVP. And they let him go and they chose two women. And those two women I heard nothing about after Tough Enough. Nothing. They made a power move. And this goes with the conversation that I, that's kind of current. Hillary Clinton. She's going to win because she's a woman. It's a different. They voted for Obama. I voted for Obama. Mostly because it's a different thing. He's black. First black president. Everybody wants to be a part of the first woman president so they did the same bullshit with tough enough and look at kenny king now still rocking shit still beating shit up and you gotta respect the kid but i'm gonna leave you with that from mr caldero to you we love it raw keep it real and keep it raw <laughs>